Hi, I'm Peter Knight. I want to welcome you to the third in this series of videos where we have a look at the influences of ball flight and why a ball goes where it does. The first video we looked at club face and the second we looked at club path. In this one we want to have a look at something that we call angle of attack. And this is where golf logic and normal logic tend to collide. It would seem that to get a ball up in the air you need to somehow get under it and scoop it. And let's say your instruction was that to get the ball up in the air you had to scoop it versus another instruction which says that you actually need to strike the ball with a descending blow. Just having that slightly different concept, which seems slight anyway, would create a massive difference in how you go about swinging the club. To say nothing of the difference in the result that you're going to get. When you strike a golf ball, you need to hit it with a descending blow. So as the club's approaching the ball, you might notice with your very good shots that the divot or the ground where you strike it is taken after you strike the ball. So with an iron shot, as the club's approaching the ground, it's swinging down. At some point, it's going to have the lowest point in its swing. I want that lowest point to be just after I've struck the ball. So my intention when I'm swinging through is not to help the ball up into the air. It's actually to allow the club to swing down and through and hit the ground. But I want to hit the ball first. So as the club's swinging through, it's going to strike the ball and then take some grass after I've struck it. So for any ball that's sitting on the ground, you want to strike it with a very descending blow. When you've got a short club like a pitching wedge or a sand iron, because you're standing a lot closer to the ball, that creates a slightly steeper swing so there's more chance of taking a divot, aside from the fact that you've got extra loft on the club, which actually helps to create that divot as well. When you're using a very long club, say a, a fairway wood for example, or a long iron, because you're further away, there's less influence to take that divot. So if you do take a divot, it'll probably be a little bit shallower. But aside from that, the most important thing to remember is that the bottom of your swing with your iron shots occurs after you've struck the ball. So you are hitting it with a slight descending blow. With a driver, for example, I don't want to hit the ground because the ball's sitting up on a tee. So when the club swings down and through, the bottom of my swing is going to occur either at the ball or just before the ball, so I'm going to catch the ball with a slight ascending blow. Now rather than changing my swing, all I'm going to do here is alter my ball position. So with the iron, and this is a six iron I've got in my hand here, my ball position is about halfway between the middle of my stance and my left heel. With the driver, I've teed the ball up further forward and it's more on the, my heel or the instep of my shoe there. So I don't have to make major changes, but just adjust the ball position. Now, in order to strike the ball with a slight descending blow, as the club's swinging down, from here you can see that my left arm and the shaft are out of line. As the club approaches the ball, the club is catching up to swinging in line with my arm, with my left arm. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to prevent my club from catching up until either impact or just after impact. What most players will do is when they're swinging down, and you can check this by having a look at your swing on camera or on a phone or something like that, is that the club swings into line with the arm too early. What that does is it makes the club hit the ground behind the ball here. If the club doesn't hit the ground, it'll catch it with a very slight or catch it as it's swinging up and so the two most common shots that you'll hit are just hitting the top of the ball and having it run along the ground or fly really low or hitting it fat striking the ground before you hit the ball and having the ball just sort of dribble off not very far when I swing the club I want my wrist to be nice and free and and time the movement so the club doesn't straighten out until I've either struck the ball or just after I've struck the ball the easiest way to achieve that is to remove any hand manipulation from the swing. That feels like you're giving up control of the movement, but it will actually enable you to be able to strike the ground more correctly. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look 
in the next video at centeredness of contact but before we do that I want you to just practice the movements that you've learned here so that you get a good sense of standing correctly good ball position and note where your club brushes the ground or takes a divot in your practice swings you'll see it brush the ground and you're looking to strike the ball at a point on the ground just before you brush that enjoy your practice and I'll see you in the next video